Experts say that about 40,000 cubic meters of debris have to be removed per kilometer when a landslide occurs. Kerala is reeling under its worst landslide disaster. In Vayanar, a series of landslides have washed away eight villages. The death toll in this tragedy has mounted to 185 and reports indicate that the number of deaths may increase. As of now, over 5,500 people have been rescued and admitted to hospitals in Vayanar. Over 3,000 people have been accommodated in the relief camps, but the worst is not over. The debris still blanket the area. The NDRF, the SDRF, the army are all working round the clock to rescue several dozens feared trapped, but the pace of work needs to be amped up. What Kerala requires at this point in time is additional heavy equipment to clear the debris and rescue those still buried under the debris. It requires assistance from the centre and neighbouring states like Tamil Nadu and Karnataka in terms of diverting heavy equipment. NewsX has put together an urgent priority list to expedite help amidst this massive tragedy. Let's uh, quickly, of course, uh, take you through some uh, urgent uh, priority as now that are needed, of course, uh, uh, even as uh, rescue and relief continues in full earnest with so many people uh, still, of course, missing. The Union government must coordinate specialized train services to send heavy equipment immediately uh, to the spot and the site of this tragedy. You can see there, of course, uh, uh, these are the pictures that have come in from that uh, location in Vainart. Private and public large construction firms are needed to divert heavy equipment for relief efforts. This should happen in full earnest as soon as possible. Also, what is of course needed is the neighbouring states should divert heavy equipment for relief efforts as well. Other states also need to step in now. Civil engineers must be deployed from across the country to help, uh, to also of course uh, lend a hand to the rescue and relief operations. Border roads, organisations, specialists, teams should be roped in as soon as possible as well for clearance. Also, Army Corps of Engineers should be roped in for assistance as well, as many hands on deck are needed and of course professional ones at that. Also Air Force Relief and Rescue uh, drops should be arranged as well, uh, those should also be the need of the hour in Kerala. You can of course uh, clearly see now the equipment list which is needed, well clearly of course bulldozers are needed immediately on ground there for clearance. Also wheel tractor scrapper, this is also something that is needed to be pressed into services. These are all the equipment lists that of course are needed. Also skid steer loasters. Skid steer loasters are also very very important uh, to clear uh, you know the site of course from uh, uh, the landslide debris. Also backhoe loaders uh, should be pressed into service as well. Uh, also excavators are needed. These are uh, more equipments, of course, that are needed uh, and, of course, should be rushed to Kerala as soon as possible. Off highway trucks, of course, also uh, are again amongst the priority list. Articulated hauler uh, as well. This is again another specialized machine uh, that uh, can help and should help on ground. Multi terrain loaders, this is also something that, of course, is the need of the other uh, in Kerala. Skidder as well, and this is how it looks like. Also, of course, uh, can really help. Uh, movable light tower also needed, of course, because remember these are round the clock, 24 7 operations, mobile, uh, movable mobile towers as well. Uh, of course, the need of the are there. And uh, concrete mixer trucks also, of course, uh, needed to be pressed into service. Remember, this is an operation which, of course, will uh, uh, you know, uh, continue for many, many days. Truck mounted cranes also, of course. Uh, something that is needed there and uh, rock breakers this is also something these drilling machines there as you can see in this picture very very important of course uh, let's just uh, show you now about uh, the way to Wynard via rail, uh, via rail from Delhi because remember of course now from all over the country movements are going to happen uh, for rescue and relief operation. It takes about 43 hours to get from the New Delhi railway station to the Nilambu road and railway station. It's the closest station uh, to the spot of the tragedy. That's the closest station uh, to Wynard. It's a long journey as we were showing you. Meanwhile from Bengaluru to Wynard uh, it takes about uh, uh, 5 hours 52 minutes as well. It's about 262.8 kilometers. Also, uh, the, the journey from Chennai, Tamil Nadu to Vayanad via rail uh, takes about uh, uh, 
uh, 12 hours 20 minutes, about 601 kilometers from the Purachi Thalaiva Central Railway Station to the Nilambur Road and Railway Station there in Kerala. So, uh, clearly, of course, uh, three routes have been uh, uh, shown by us there. Uh, more, of course, uh, hands on deck, uh, of course, are needed. Uh, but let's quickly go across to our panelists who will help us uh, also uh, list together the priority list right now, which is needed after this tragedy has struck. Professor S.K. Singh, HOD, uh, Department of Civil Engineering, DU, is uh, joining us live. Karnel Singh, Structural Consultant, is also live with us. Yogesh Kotri, Civil Engineer, is live with us. Prem Bahukandi, Disaster Management Expert, also joins the broadcast. Vivek Menon, Highway Construction Expert, is with us live. Major General Prajesh Kumar, former Collector General, Military Engineering Services, also uh, joins us live. Appreciate all of you uh, uh, being with us live on the broadcast. Uh, specialists, all of them, as you can uh, clearly see from their designations. Professor S. Kissing, let me begin with you first. Uh, uh, it's, it's a big tragedy. Uh, what right now needs to be the priority, of course, rescue and relief uh, is clearly the need of the hour right now. Location of the missing people, then the effort of rebuilding will begin. Landslide uh, has occurred in the Vainar district because of the heavy rain and uh, because of this what happens in land landslide when there is a heavy rain? Uh, then uh, the strength of the rocks or strength of the soil uh, on the hilly hilly area that is uh, becomes weak. And with the water, it all the debris, all the soil, all the all other material just flow. And when it just flows, though, so it, it creates a lot of damage in the downstream side. And that's what happened in uh, in Vainard. And because of this, many villages, many people. Uh, Avengers has got so much damage, and all the population, all uh, all the population has got affected. And we uh, there we have uh, we have seen such a big tragedy. I think this is the second time uh, in Kerala. So first of all, uh, such type of tragedy is uh, occurring, and we should be we should be careful, or we should take action for this, so that these uh, tragedies can be reduced or whatever action is taking place, whatever damage is taking place, that, that can be reduced. One, one thing I would like to say because of the, this ecological imbalance, there are a lot of ecological imbalance, that's why all these things are occurring. In fact, all these things occur. But if we have not created so much uh, ecological imbalance, that is uh, cutting up the trees, cutting up the forest, and deforestation, all those things. So this damage, whatever damage is of uh, occurring, damage might have got reduced. First of all, whatever damage has been occurred, as a civil engineer, as a as an environmental engineer, as a citizen, it is uh, in my opinion. First of all, all the rescue operations should be done, and uh, those who, who are who, who are got affected. They, this, uh, their uh, proper care should be taken. That's why government, the central government as well as state government and other states are also helping in this in this center. And they are providing all the equipments, all the uh, big big equipments and uh, uh, other machinery so that whatever damage has been uh, occurred or whatever lives are there, uh, the, the, they are they are they are there. In the in that they, that area, they they should be cleared and and they should be they should be brought to the safer places. And another danger is also there. There may be again there be, there is uh, there may be the rain. So all those things should be taken care. And whatever facilities, whatever equipment, whatever uh, helps we can provide, we should provide it as uh, as early as possible. Uh, so that whatever life already so much lives more than 150 lives have already uh, has gone so more and more this uh, risk, uh, rescue should be fast and uh, 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 rest of the lives could be saved and also we should see the such type of uh, when uh, such type of uh, events occur so there should not be such its effect can, can be reduced only thing, whatever natural calamities are there, they cannot be, it is not in our hands. But whatever effects, if we are ready, if our preparedness is there, then uh, this, this, its effect can be reduced. Their government as well, as we should be careful about that, about the preparedness. And our NDMA team is there 
and all those things should be ready for such as such type of the such type of the events and i uh, uh, since there was already some uh, indication has been uh, given that such type of rain heavy rain may come if we have we have seen and we have earlier in advance we have taken care then the whatever lives we have lost that can be reduced so uh, in the last just i would like to say uh, for such type of uh, 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 such type of the events such type of activity uh, we should be uh, ready uh, ready and our preparedness should be more such type of things are also occurring in the uh, uh, in uttarakhand also and other many places uh, is occurring because of the this climate change this have, have rain rain pattern has has been changed and this intensity of rain is increasing everywhere this intensity of rain is increasing and these are causing such such type of such type of problems so in future also such type of uh, pro problems may not occur such type of damages may, may not occur we should be prepared and our preparedness should be there so we have to work a lot for the preparedness of such of the events because because of this since climate change is occurring so because of climate change day by day this type of the things are increasing even even in in uttarakhand many times we have seen there is a cloud burst in cloud burst also this type of things happens what happened here so now we should be prepared we should come be prepared for this so uh, the, the, this way we we should take care and at least here in wynad all government even private sector all construction active uh, construction right uh, right let me also get in the others now karnel so, so, singh also with us live karnel singh please come in here on the priority list uh, there is needed uh, more equipment of course needed more hands on deck needed uh, needed because this is a very complicated operation isn't it karnel singh yes yes of course the, the heavy machinery like big hole then uh, excavator then the loaders and other machinery which will be uh, which can be utilized there should be easily uh, uh, easily sent there and it will help the rescue operation and first priority should be on rescuing the man and uh, uh, this man, man uh, livelihood so uh, manpower so that this uh, life of the people can be saved easily thank you all right uh, let me also in fact uh, quickly uh, uh, take that across to uh, yogesh uh, kotri yogesh kotri uh, you know what is making the the uh, rescue and relief operation more and more complicated there on ground is it the adverse weather is it the uh, uh, the rough terrain the hilly terrain uh, or is it the scale of the tragedy no you are talking hello hello Yo yogesh are you there with us yogesh kotri uh, you are not audible properly i think your network is so yogesh if you can hear me i'm trying to ask you about what is complicating the rescue and relief what is making the the operation very tedious is it the terrain is it the adverse weather is it the scale of the tragedy okay I sorry think, i think we don't sorry, have yogesh i am not getting I'm prem baku ba baukundi let me get you in here prem baukundi uh, let me bring you in here on what right now the immediate priorities are you know short term and then of course long term as we attempt to build rebuild vinar and the and this the the site where this massive landslide has occurred see the short term is still um, our people are working those who are expert on that that uh, short term must be the saving the life saving the property and the rescue operation will be the first part but the long term priority is that we have to answer ourselves and we, we have to question ourselves that what is why this madhav gadil committee's report was not implemented which is lying there for last 40 years we know that this himalaya and this coastal area both are landslide sensitive zones they are landslide prone zones so these two places where um, the madhav gadil committee uh, was formed in by the last government in 2010 or 2011 but it submitted its report in 2011 and in this report they said that 75% area of the uh, western ghat should be declared as eco sensitive area psa so then this government or i mean 
government doesn't follow this this instruction and they have not uh, implemented that report and then what they did they just uh, form another committee under the uh, chairmanship of k kasturi ranjan who is a uh, well known scientist and this committee gave its report and said that 50% area of the coastal area that started from tamil nadu kerala maharashtra goa uh, <coughs> karnataka and then uh, gujarat it should be declared as esa a coast sensitive zone ecolog ecological sensitive area but again uh, government has not uh, done this thing so first priority must be rescue operation and then sec second priority we must think of implementing these two reports we must think of why this haven't uh, done for last 14 years and especially this kerala and karnataka area i mean they have they have uh, rejected this report and they said no no they are not interested in because of politics or something like that but they said that no we are not interested in uh, and they have uh, opposed some areas declaring as esa so they are they continue uh, doing mining um, querying from that area construction industries and everything so this whole area is being disturbed like anything for last thing last july to uh, 22nd i mean july 22nd uh, 2022 the government has declared that uh, they have implemented this uh, they have notified 50% area of uh, this um, western ghat as esa but again in the recent uh, notification they have said some 37% about 37% is only declared as esa this is not in western ghat only but just see the situation in uttarakhand what uh, mr um, i was just talking about mr sk singh was talking about in uttarakhand in especially in joshmat area which is sinking for last 2 3 years um, the mishra committee report gave its report in 1976 and they said that this uh, area especially joshmat area should be declared as eco sensitive and all the uh, this uh, big um, construction activity road construction activity dam activity should be banned but again nothing is happening here so this is important primarily for a short term that we must uh, focus on the rescuing the lives uh, properties of the people who have uh, the third thing was i want to point out here that this particular area where this uh, mishap happened is not the area where this landslide was um, occurred landslide had occurred some 6 km 7 km away from that area so uh, especially the people who are not living on that landslide prone area they should think that this can affect them some 7 km away from the landslide zone or somewhere else so we have to think about uh, the whole um, uh, i mean this notion that we are safe and we are living in some other place we are not close to that landslide prone area so i guess this uh, this, uh, this these are two priorities we have to think about one uh, long term and the short term and immediately we have to um, definitely rain this climate change global warming and there is a report that this um, uh, the temperature of the urban seas is increasing this has affected this heavy rain in that area so that is uh, the global phenomenon we can't do this but what we can do at a localized level what we can do at the country level we must do and we must prioritize this in next for 3 4 months or 6 months thank you all right. Uh, well, let me uh, also quickly then uh, take that to uh, Vivek uh, Menon, who's also with us live. Vivek Menon, uh, you know, clearly, of course, uh, it, it's it, the scale of the tragedy is huge. Uh, and now the rebuilding will also take that kind of time. Uh, what really, according to you now, need to be the equipments which are needed? Where all will we attempt to source them from? Uh, and as far uh, as Vivek, uh, the immediate priorities for the clearing of the routes to Vainada are concerned, uh, what is being done on ground? So, you know, I mean, um, obviously this is a huge tragedy and um, unfortunately it's happening at the beginning of the monsoon season. I mean, we really aren't into the monsoon season as yet. Uh, in fact, just two weeks ago, I was in that part of the world and I was driving through there and um, I did see that most of the rivers were already swelling with a lot of water. Uh, now, of course, there are 
pictures that are coming in from places like Patambi, which is not really in the Vayanad region, but it's in Trishu district and in, uh, in, in the neighboring districts, Palakkad district. Now, most of the reservoirs are full right now, just because of the heavy, intensive rainfall. And I think, you know, my previous panelists have already mentioned about climate change and we, have, we, we know that this is going to happen. Uh, now, I think the bigger challenge that they're having in terms of rescue operations, I think there was a question you asked before, is that most of these rivers are already swelling and it's getting very difficult to cut across. Uh, there are several dams in that region. Um, and uh, unfortunately, you know, one of the things that they could do as preparedness for such events uh, is to start emptying out the dams. Uh, you know, the dams serve as detention facilities. And, you know, as we have these intensive rainfall events, it's important for us to start, you know, creating capacity within these dams so that, you know, we are able to release the water and then able to trap the water as it rains. So unfortunately, that has not been done. Uh, the other thing, of course, is deforestation. And I know there are innumerable number of reports that have been written, uh, you know, in terms of how we need to protect these ecologically sensitive zones. Uh, but unfortunately, none of that is being done. And, you know, logging is a huge industry, a huge business uh, that is politically driven in, in Kerala. Um, and in specifically in these parts of Vayanad, uh, Sultan Bateri, these are all areas that have, you know, huge amounts of logging that goes on. And I think that this calamity is a result of that kind of uh, logging and deforestation. Uh, now, of course, uh, you know, the, the event has already occurred and there's there's probably, uh, you know, more down the way just because of the intensive rainfall that we are having. Um, it is going to be difficult to get construction equipment out there. But then at the same time, uh, you know, there are a lot of contractors working in Karnataka, working in Tamil Nadu. I think they need to bring in their resources. I know that the army and sometimes even the Navy has actually been uh, deployed over there. All of the resources are being put towards Kerala. Uh, now, of course, they do have, you know, uh, various, you know, loaders and and graders and all of that stuff, uh, they need to bring in that equipment. The rebuilding process is going to be difficult uh, because these are difficult areas to get to. There are very narrow roads that actually lead to these areas. And so getting to them is going to be a challenge. Uh, that is something that has to be met, you know, and hopefully going forward, you know, we start planning in advance for a lot of all of these calamities. I mean, you know, uh, these are man-made, you know, you are seeing uh, heavy intensities of rainfall and sometimes the inevitable is going to happen. But, you know, Kerala just saw floods about three years ago, and these were massive floods, but nothing has really been done post that to mitigate these floods. The same thing is happening with landslides right now. You know, most of our slopes in Kerala, you know, they're, they're pretty steep slopes in that Vainad region. Uh, but at the same time, as we log, as we, you know, start deforesting those areas, the, the toe-stope failure, which is what is happening in these regions, is going to prone to happen because it's the, uh, the, the ecology, the trees that actually hold these slopes together. Now, in Karnataka itself, you know, a portion of the Bangalore uh, Mangalore Highway washed away the other day because of the Yatinohole project. The Yatinohole project is, you know, bringing water from the lower reaches to the upper reaches. And, you know, they've got large diameter lines that are running through there. Now, when these lines were laid, unfortunately, they did not compact the, the earth fill that they brought in. And so, you know, a, a whole uh, section of the road has actually collapsed. Now, to rebuild that slope is going to be a big challenge which means, you know, this, this connectivity between Bangalore and Mangalore is going to take a while. So I think what is happening is that, you know, we have a disdain uh, for our ecologically sensitive areas. I think, you know, there is a, there is a, there is a sense of having too much. You know, India is blessed uh, with, with, with very good ecology. We have, you know, huge forest areas. Um, we have enough of water, but the water management component is where we are lacking in. And I think that disdain and that apathy towards our natural resources is what has brought us to this problem. Uh, now, of course, going forward, I hope the Kerala government realizes their follies um, and starts correcting these, you know, maybe preparing it for, you know, the, the worst events that are probably, uh, you know, we have monsoons up until September. Um, and we are just now in July. So we've got two and a half months ahead of us. Uh, we're going to have to be prepared for this. And I think, you know, some amount of disaster management has to be planned in advance. Yes, uh, clearly the, it, it does. Uh, Major General Brijesh Kumar, come in here, sir. Uh, Major General Kumar, obviously there are a lot of lessons to be learned, which we will speak about, uh, you know, in a short while from now on this uh, broadcast. But first, the priority right now. Uh, the SOPs right now, some of which are already being followed, some which need to be in the next 48 hours. Very, very crucial time uh, as rescue and relief continues. The search, of course, prioritizing those who are still alive right now. True. Actually, uh, just to add to the tragedy, 
you know, this is actually quite a bit man-made per se. Climatology, climatic change is one, but deforestation and greed for getting into the valleys and construction is another. Having said that, we don't have to really worry much about it. Having as a country, as a nation, we have tremendous kind of a capability with regards to disaster management. It has happened. We've seen it happening in very remote localities, in be it Uttarakhand, Jammu and Kashmir, the earthquakes in Bhuj and Maharashtra. To that extent, we don't have to worry about. What is our worry is immediately is rescue and relief. Relief a little later. So rescue means that. Getting hold of people who are alive, are getting who are sick, getting them treated, restoration of utility, electricity, water, communication, all gets disrupted in this kind of calamity. So I'm sure the task force at hand is looking at it, they're expert. The other thing which I fear is far too many resources come in such kind of a calamity. The, the requirement of a very effective local state government platform with a clear hierarchy to manage the resources is often a bigger problem than anything else. Resources per se are not a problem. Their deployment, priority, fixing responsibility is another. And having said that, we may to talk about the narrow roads in Kerala. Kerala is not blessed with four rate lane highways. With, with the kind of a population they have, roads are already very narrow. So they're going to have difficulty in reaching those little materials, plants, equipment, trucks to the work site. Deployment them in plain area is also important, which also is going to be difficult being a heli terrain. But I am sure with the armed Indian Army, it is armed forces, disaster management to the central government, the state government, and the people of Kerala or why not, who themselves would have rallied tremendously to look at this aspect. So the first three days is rescue rescue and rescue. Get hold of people, get hold of sick people, evacuate them to hospital, treat them, diarrhea, dysentery, you got to do inoculation, vaccinations, men, cattle and all other things as well. So that is the first priority, saving of life of men and animals. <coughs> the next comes is the mitigation process or relief getting them, deploying them, getting them houses, getting the work. That's a long drawn process. There are SOPs which are existing. So there's nothing much to worry about. It's just sad that we lose about 160 people in a, the most developed part of the country. Kerala has the highest HDI. People are sensible. But then the factor of greed is what driving us. And we need to be careful, not only in Kerala. All over the country, these situations will happen. Somebody talked of committee reports. These committee reports are, you know, papers which are piled somewhere. We need people's participation into it. When we go to do something which affects my livelihood and a poor man at the function level, I will never do it. I'll say, okay, baad mein dekhenge. So that is a kind of an uh, uh, area. We need NGOs. We need uh, people like uh, these, uh, anybody who can join in, fill in the voids. The government can do so much. The local people can do so much. Organization can do so much. But the NGOs come in very handy. Whether they are the religious groups or the, or the group from the society or trader community or RSS, whoever they are, they actually give a healing touch at the common man. Because the, at the macro level, what we talk about does not necessarily reach in that uh, uh, form to the common man. Our intent is good, but delivery is important. And as I said, first 96 hours are crucial. Fortunately, the terrain is not bad. It's not as bad when we compare to other parts of the country, along the Himalayan belt or otherwise. So to that extent, I am saying things are in control. There is a bit of panic. We are working on it. And I'm sure the Kerala state government would put up an effective mechanism at the place to manage rescue, relief, and then get aid to them. Rebuilding process, will take time and that's not an issue. The other aspect is finances and resources. Since the government of India has probably given their, opened their coffers to it, the state government will be doing it. So I'm sure in some point of time, it, the things will get mitigated, but the lessons learned should be followed. However, there is a little danger. That's of 
politicking, not for special, especially to talk about. We also know how these things are played about. So in the social media, the narrative has to be positive. We all are responsible. Don't look for fight. For, don't look for fault finding now. Look for succour, rescue, and relief needs a healing touch. And I'm sure we as a nation are capable to do it. And we wait for seven, ten day, days. Things will become reasonably normal. That's all I have to say. Professor S K Singh, uh, on this, uh, Professor S K Singh, uh, uh, you know clearly there is. Uh, many lessons there are many lessons to be learned from this current tragedy and some of them those lessons should be implemented as soon as possible because the rain rainy season is still on in many parts of the country and there is still a danger of further flash floods and landslides isn't it professor singh what should immediately be implemented across many other parts of the country so in fact just just in previous uh, uh, earlier also just i i just uh, talked about the climate change since mm -hmm. climate change is now coming very fast its effect is day by day its effect is increasing so this type of uh, uh, events this type of uh, uh, events will be very common either it is in kerala either it is in uh, odisha either either it is in jammu kashmir or in uttarakhand so now the time has come we should be prepared prepared for this we uh, we, we, uh, we had to be prepared because we cannot control it because these are the natural things when we cannot control so we have to be prepared yourself because now uh, we have we have not cared about the, our nature we have just gone, gone for the de uh, uh, deforestation our our this uh, uh, what whatever uh, natural surface was there natural uh, ground was there we have just disturbed there is not much vegetation so all these things because of because of that these things is happening if there was any forest, if there was when a lot of trees were there, so whatever debris and whatever water was flowing, so this this should have been stopped. Our uh, uh, velocity should have got reduced. Just it, because this, whatever these damages has taken place, this is, uh, I think, about 7-8 kilometers away from the landslide area. So because there was not obstacle, natural, if there was some natural obstacle, then this these damages has got reduced. So we should learn, we should learn lesson from this and now we should care for our mother earth and whatever our, uh, we should grow, go for more and more uh, uh, plantation, more and more trees should be grown, our natural natural system, natural ecosystem should be, should be established so that because we have now day by day, because of the, uh, uh, our population increase at the earth, because of other reasons we are going for the concrete concrete jungles we are going and whatever these these things deforestation we are doing all these are because of these these reason are these reasons are because of this only what whatever is happening so now we have to be prepared that's why i am presently i am in rajasthan we have just uh, prom we have just taken note that we should go for more than 1 crore plantation in the state same way all our natural things uh, should should be should be uh, 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 should be conserved and uh, at least this plantation drive should be everywhere. I think in in Kerala also a lot of trees cutting were there, a lot of deforestation were there, and all these are just reason outcome of all those things. So by taking lesson from these activities, these these uh, these mishaps, uh, we should go for uh, go. For Go for our uh, conservation of our nature so that these 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 uh, these happenings should be reduced. Okay. Also, thank uh, you. Yes, let me also see if uh, Yogesh Kotri is there with us. Yogesh, uh, are you back with us now? Okay, I don't think Yogesh Kotri, unfortunately, is uh, uh, his connection. I think can uh, has not been able to be fixed just yet. But Kanel Singh, quickly. Uh, uh, coming in, uh, you know, come in here at this point, Karnel Singh, on, you know, also now the professionals. Uh, obviously, the NDRF right now uh, has immediately been rushed in. The Army is helping them. I think the Navy Southern Command is also helping. But do you believe reinforcements are needed? And which are the teams that can be brought in from other parts of the country as soon as possible in the days ahead? Uh, yes, yes. As told by my 
plagues that there is a the roads are very uh, narrow yes. where heavy machinery cannot go and then we can uh, airlift the heavy machinery and uh, uh, mobilize all of our resources there <laughs> so that this uh, type of we can take rescue operation more efficiently and uh, in, in the air force and the others have very big uh, this helicopters and other things which they can employ there for uh, saving uh, the further damage yes sir <clears throat> okay fair enough uh, prem uh, baukandi come in here now uh, on uh, you know on the lessons uh, from this tragedy that that are needed to be implemented now across other states as well you know we've seen uh, st uh, many tragedies over the years in various different states kerala also has been no stranger but it's happened in other parts of the country is better center state coordination needed what further needs to be done and implemented as i said on an immediate basis we can't wait till next year on an immediate basis because the the rainy season is still here there are still further threats of more tragedies if we don't act now see right now i'm not in a field so i can't say that what's the coordination between the state government and central government i believe that it, it must be a good because from the statements um, from the statements it uh, i don't think it is from the statement i guess uh, yes. the, uh, because they are uh, two different parties both places so uh, kerala government is saying that the central government must give some uh, special um, effort special amount to this area but uh, i have full respect for our people who are expert on that ndrf and state government and other well but my point is that the, uh, mr uh, singh told that they have they are, they are going to plant various trees but my point is that this area vinad area is a heavily forested area it's it has a very good forest and just now 3 days back in one uh, village in puda kedar area of the terri district we have the whole village devastated only death was that three two people died on this but the whole village has devastated in uttarakhand government have, i mean we had to we have some reports of expert committees report that some um, 100 villages need to be uh, relocated to some other place but government is not doing this long term vision so we have to think about the precautions what we can do precautionary measures what i was talking about gardil report madhav gardil gave this report in some 14 years back that this whole area is eco sensitive and we must um uh, we must close all our activities like uh, querying uh, construction and all these things in uttarakhand this whole char dham all weather road so called wall weather road which is uh, these day this supposed to be a, um, a good road and earlier it was good road but now this uh, all weather road is uh, has become a devastation for uttarakhand it has become a problem for uttarakhand this 12 meter wide road uh, for some 15000 cr it uh, had already taken uh, eaten and this has become a disaster this has disturbed the ecology this have uh, disturbed the geology ecology whole um, ecology of this system including geology so we must think about our development priorities we must think about going for the in depth study we we must uh, do a some kind of um, uh, committees at the um, uh, environment ministry in the center and the state ministry to uh, go and to look at the climatic conditions to go for the these sensitive areas what is going to happen in here so and it should be done immediately because this uh, the monsoon is now for next two three months it will be in india in uttarakhand kerala both are sensitive kannada ke jaso sensitive last three years back we have seen that's uh, this whole coastal area so my point is that we must do a coordination we must think about this in a war footing area um, uh, level that uh, climate change and this global warming is going to affect country badly particularly in himalayan region or is in a coastal area or is a western ghat region so we must prepare for that we must do a precautionary uh, measures we should not wait for disaster to happen and then we'll go for the rescue operation rescue operation people who are expert on that they are doing they'll do it definitely whatever rescue will come army and navy and other people air force and all things they will come and ndrf will come in the picture and they will do but what the other people bureaucrats politicians experts environmental experts what they are doing what they have done in last 14 years we must think about this and we must criticize them and we must um, uh, Oh, take them to into the picture. So this is my 
um, suggestion to the government and to the bank. Vivek Menon, you know, what, what uh, now is, is needed for further better coordination between centre and state for a more federal structure of governance? Uh, and also, Vivek, as far as, uh, you know, the, the roots to this particular, you know, point, uh, uh, as you were telling us earlier, of course, what the short-term priority is needed, what about long-term measures now that should be taken, uh, you know, to ensure that such tragedies do not befall Kerala in the future years to come? Sure. You know, I think, you know, in the recent past, you know, some of the tragedies that we've been actually assessing have been very urban. They've been very urban problems. And, you know, we talked about this in the past, you know, in terms of urban flooding and things like that. But I think what has happened over here essentially is in more of a rural setting. Now, the unfortunate part is that, you know, zoning as as a as a, as a national uh, initiative uh, needs to be undertaken. You know, these places which are ecologically sensitive basically need to be kept uh, completely pristine. And, you know, you've got to completely probably eliminate any kind of construction uh, in these regions. I mean, they have to be much like in the United States. You know, there are national parks and these are areas which are ecologically sensitive areas. They are sometimes, you know, groundwater recharge zones. Uh, these have to be demarcated and they have to be, you know, kept as such. Uh, now, if you look at the kind of construction that we have seen within this valley region of Wayanad, uh, where this disaster actually took place, you're seeing a lot of concrete construction. You're seeing a lot of, you know, probably these are resorts that have been built, uh, um, and many of this, many of these are built without really any planning. You know, they're built at the bottom of a slope. Uh, there is absolutely no agency out there to kind of monitor some of these things. And that's what causes these natural disasters. You know, I mean, obviously the rainfall, you know, the, the ecology and the, uh, the topography of that entire system, of that entire region actually allows for the water to flow through rivers and through various, uh, you know, dams and all of that. So I think the key is to restore the balance. I think that's what we're missing right now. Uh, We've got to demarcate these areas and ensure that nothing happens. Now, in the short term, obviously, you know, rescue and all of that is, you know, in, is, is what we are seeing right now. Uh, relief efforts to make sure that, you know, the value of life, I think that's something that we don't really understand here in India. Um, and I think we, we we don't mind 100 people dying and, you know, it's just another calamity. It's just another casualty. And, you know, it, it goes away from the minds of people. But I think that's the value that we need to bring back. Now, fortunately, you know, Kerala, uh, the people of Kerala have been extremely resilient. I mean, in the past, floods. You know, it was the people that came out and helped the army. In fact, the army was in there, but the people of Kerala really came back. They were resurgent, they were resilient and uh, today they've built back also. So I think going forward, we need to start demarcating these areas. We need to start taking a closer look uh, across the country, you know, whether it's the national disaster relief uh, agencies or whether it's the environmental agencies. I think they need to start coordinating with each other. And I think one of the biggest problems we find in India is this institutional ego. You you know, where an institution says, you know, this is my jurisdiction and I won't go past this or I'm, I'm the end all here. So I think that lack of coordination between these different agencies, whether it's the, you know, the, the Green Tribunal, uh, which has powers today. I mean, they've been empowered to ensure that, you know, construction in these sensitive zones does not occur. But we do find it occurring again. So I think the key is to reestablish the balance. When we look at afforestation, uh, we've been talking about deforestation a lot, but when you look at afforestation, we've also got, make to, got, uh, got to make sure that we bring back native species. You know, in a lot of areas in Karnataka, they've been planting teak trees because teak is obviously commercially very viable, but that does not necessarily bode well for the, um, for the uh, ecological sensitivity of the region. So I think we need to bring in, you know, experts who understand local trees, who understand the local ecology and are able to bring back that balance. Uh, now, as far as, you know, the roads systems are concerned, yes, um, Kerala does not have very wide roads. Um, you know, in fact, interestingly, I was in Kerala not too long ago, and uh, it takes a very long time to get to any of these regions. So uh, we do have that challenge in front of us. But I think the army is, you know, quite well equipped to get around that. Uh, there are bases close by from which they can mobilize. Um, I think they've got to mobilize, you know, even the private sector over there if they can with, you know, JCBs and things of that kind. Um, and so that, you know, the rescue and relief operations can can happen and post that, uh, obviously, the reconstruction process, which is a much longer process, uh, 
But hopefully the government, the state government realizes its folly. And I think, you know, while they can rely on the national government for some help right now and funds maybe, I think it's going to bear on the state government to take uh, the right decisions. I say that even in Karnataka here, where we are con consistently facing uh, various disasters across the Western Ghats, which kind of spans both Kerala and Karnataka. Uh, the government needs to take a proactive stance, uh, stop the blame game. Obviously, that's not something that's going to do any good to anyone, uh, but it's to start getting down to the grassroots and saying, hey, you know, these are regions where construction is completely illegal. We will demolish those and uh, make sure that these ecologically sensitive zones are protected going forward. In fact, take that to Major General Brajesh Kumar as well. Major General Brajesh Kumar, uh, you know, uh, clearly, of course, uh, uh, right now, the, the rescue and relief, of course, is continuing in full earnest, even though the death toll, unfortunately, has also uh, been uh, climbing, uh, climbing up steadily in this particular incident. Uh, but Major General Kumar, if we talk about now, uh, you know, further, uh, as you told us earlier, the army, of course, has been pressed in. I think the Navy Southern Command is, the Air Force also needs to be pressed in if they are not. What, uh, how can the Army, the, the services and also the police further help uh, in this uh, disaster rescue and relief that is currently underway? And which commands, as, as you would of course be the best amongst us aware, can immediately be pressed into service and which of course would perhaps uh, you know, make it in 48 hours to 72 hours time? Okay, okay, before that, one more uh, point which I'd like to highlight, if I may. Uh, you know, when we have talk of zoning, zoning is already there across the country. The issue is of implementation. And the most important thing here in any calamity is the early warning system and sensitization. India has come a long way. Those of you who remember 2004, uh, tsunami. We had terrible losses. But despite that, we were able to not only manage our own thing, but help out our neighboring countries in Sri Lanka and Mali. The number of fishermen who lost their life was tremendous. Consider that. We took a cue from it. There was an elaborate system which came up. Coastal zone regulation. That means no construction along the Indian coast, whether east, west, will take place within 200 meters, unless the, the, the building already existed. So they implemented it. More importantly, they established a communication with the fishermen community. They are very large in number, spread all over Bay of Bengal, uh, Arabian Sea, and in the south as well. Imagine the plight, or imagine what happened in the Orissa cyclone two years Huge cyclone, we were able to warn people, evacuate the fishermen, tell the local people in the coastal area, be careful, there is a storm of strength eight or nine coming up. People listen. People listen, the government enforced, everybody enforced. What result? Phenomenal. Two deaths, deaths are bad, but only two deaths. So point I am trying to tell you is early warning and sensitization is the most important thing in tropical countries where we have lack of resources, where we have people who will be indifferent to it, where the all stakeholders will come with a greed to A, narrow down the flood channel of a river, do deforestation at will, climate changes possibly we cannot control. But there lies, there lies a rub, sensitize people, give all the early warning so that people are mentally prepared and they move away to safety places. I believe, from the newspaper reporter, this was possibly given a go-by. It's a big lesson learned that please trust our meteorological people, trust our government sources when they tell you that so-and-so is liable to happen. Coming back to your question, well, who can look after it? You see, such situations, they are not very large as I see, despite the death and trauma, which is very, very compared to what we see or, or the scale we see in the state of Uttarakhand or Jammu and Kashmir. They are huge in number, large areas where resources are less to come by, where civil administration also depends upon the services for uh, you know, support. Here in this case, 
fortunately we are a much developed part it's a area where all resources are available the area per se otherwise comes under you know the uh, uh, tamil nadu uh, kerala uh, area which is the headquarters at chennai and there is also a southern naval command located at kochi in addition we have a brigade at uh, trivandrum so anybody could be given a task i thought this is a worthwhile task at the functional level where we young dc or somebody he, he forms he forms a core team to supervise them and there is a army unit or army columns air force columns medical team naval teams ndrf teams state teams which are coordinated on behalf by the army column commander who could be a, a you know a half colonel or a colonel and then this go whole hog into supervising things the ball game is priority who to accord priority where to send resources whom to send hospital where do you deploy people so there are nits and gits actually it's it's a it's a mind boggling operation it's not easy what happens is bulk of the people go there after the trauma is actually over 3 4 days the worst is actually gone i'm sure the uh, the governance today is lot more abler enabled people lot more smarter literate and the ngos that they have talked about they would have done something more. but otherwise well the district magistrate there has to be along with side with the military people who are assisting him at one, and have a one point coordination because too many agencies also do not help and it has been seen even otherwise there are far too many agencies and then with all good intention you are not able to reach out to the people who are affected or to the areas which have been affected there are other aspects also you have to cordon people they are looting people see human being greed continue you know they they will take away the cattle i recollect from my old days early and suddenly the guy doesn't leave his hut because he has got his cattle if he goes away somebody pinches his cattle so he doesn't want to leave so you got to secure him there so such kind of a things i was bound to happen and i'm sure things are uh, should be should be all right provided we 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 work together and there's no reason why they should not at this point of time a heart teaches out to the people of vayana district and our, our prayers are with them and with all the resources and good good intent i'm sure we'll be back to normal in some point of time but the initial portion of rescue and thereafter relief should take place in about rescue firstly for the next about 72 hours and relief about month month month, month and a half only thing we want the god to help us that there's no downpour again of a very catastrophic nature or a cloud that will have little control but having said that people have experienced it gone through it they are sensitized administration sensitized people involved are sensitized so things should work out pretty well and i do presume that we would have learned some lessons there would be government uh, uh, think tanks committee reports political parties professional civil engineer uh, forest people medical people the animal society people and what have you Com- combine them get them together and do try and implement that is our wish list our problem is in implementation all good thoughts all noble thoughts all good intent come to not when we get to implementation because our personal little things are uh, uh, you know probably hold us from adding value but as i said in the beginning we have had a very good experience of managing calamities of much larger nature and i think and the people of uh, kerala boyd industrious and the resources coming by we should be out of this uh, syndrome in next about 2 to 3 weeks and near normalcy about 3 uh, 3 to 4 3 to 4 months time okay let me uh, in fact uh, g- give a quick closing comment uh, to professor sk singh on the way forward now professor singh professor singh uh, yeah 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 yes uh, in fact now in the name of development we are just exploiting our the, our uh, our nature our, our environment that's why all these things are occurring uh, in the name of development what we have done we have created all these problems we have for the uh, concrete jungle we are just going to make we are industries we are setting but we are not caring our our environment so now time has come we have to, we have to go for the development as well as we have to also uh, be friendly with the environment uh, we have to conserve our environment 
and now only the sustainable development should be there particularly in the hilly areas or uh, 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 in the hills generally this development is taking place a lot of hotels a lot of uh, uh, picnic spots and uh, big development is taking place what is happening in the uttarakhand what is happening in kerala or what uh, other uh, at other pl other places so because of this uh, uh, development all these things are happening we are not against with the development but only sustainable development should be done when we are going for any side sort of development or constructing the road constructing uh, 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 cities construction towns then there whatever natural things are there all the nature that should be conserved what happened here in uh, in kerala if our natural natural uh, streams or uh, natural drains were intact then such type of things has not occurred uh, so that that's what we have to in future we have we have to be friendly with that and only we should go for the sustainable develop and when we are going for development whatever is the na natural things are there that should be conserved just uh, what uh, drains or streams or uh, whatever uh, nature has already there so those, that that should be conserved only then such type of okay. uh, such type of happenings will be reduced my thanks to all of our guests for joining us on this broadcast